Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiff. And how are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. You know what today is? I do not know, Matt. 17 days till the Kentucky Derby, Brian. And we've got a lot, of, lot to talk about to get folks prepared for the big race to get us prepared for the big race. And we're going to kick off with our contenders and pretenders show, which is a great way to get you thinking about uh, ways to reduce that field of 20 to a reasonable number. A reasonable number. Yeah. Well, 20, and we've actually got 26 horses now, Matt, 17 days out. You say, I like it. That's a good, uh, that's a good number. It's uh, right around the corner. Plenty of anticipation building and contenders and pretenders, uh, quite honestly, is a show that everybody asks for. So here we go. We're going to start at the top and Matt, as you probably guessed, or as everyone out there probably guessed the top uh, horses on the list, you're going to see a whole lot of contenders from us, but uh, I think we're both pretty honest of horses we're considering and betting and horses we're really not concerned betting. Let's go. Yeah. And I, I agree with that, Brian, you know, when we say contenders, that means you might be thinking about using the horse as a win bet, but you might also just be considering using that horse in the, uh, exotic wagers like the exactas and trifectas and superfectas also and then there's the pretenders the ones that we're not betting at all absolutely matt i'm not betting number one to win uh but i do think forte is the horse to beat uh maybe five to two somewhere around there is the favorite as a pretty clear favorite in the kentucky derby although kentucky derby betting always surprised us Matt, uh, no surprise to anyone. We have the winner of six out of seven lifetime, a two-year-old champion, two for two this year as a contender. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Brian. And and I personally, I find this year to be a particularly difficult year. If you're going to press me and say, who's your win pick? Who's your top pick? Right now, wow, I, I, it, it, it's a tough call. But uh, Forte is certainly a contender, certainly a horse you have to consider about uh, using in your exotic wagers in particular. Um, I don't know if I would like any horse in this field as the favorite. I agree with you there, Matt. Uh, yeah, my, my top pick in the Kentucky Derby is going to boil down to, do I think he can win? Do I think he's probably going to run a good race? Does he have good odds? Does he have fair odds? And I think Forte is a little bit lower than I want to risk uh, for a race that should be pretty wide open, but Forte, the horse to beat. Number two on this list, Matt, is practical move. I'll be honest, this is a horse who I, I had number one on my list before the Santa Anita Derby. Now, he won the Santa Anita Derby. I think he ran a good race in the Santa Anita Derby, but I do have some more lingering distance questions with practical move. Yeah, that may be the case, but certainly, Brian, um, I guess it's been a little bit of a surprise, maybe not to you, but to most people that a practical move would emerge from the West Coast as the clear cut uh, prospect for the Kentucky Derby. Um, I think it's kind of cool, actually, because uh, practical move is trained by Tim Yachtin and has always been trained by Tim Yachtin as opposed to the horses that have been moved into his barn in the last few weeks for convenience sake. Yeah, practical move is definitely a horse I'm going to bet. In fact, I, I don't think he'll really be below 10 to 1 or, or much below 10 to 1 in here. It seems like the future wagers, he's consistently been overlooked a little bit as he's won three greatest stakes in a row out in Southern California. Number three on the list is another horse I don't think gets a lot of talk for what he's done in his career, Matt. We both have Angel of Empire as a contender. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and yeah, maybe not as much talk as expected, but I certainly think there'll be plenty of talk. Uh, he's one of, I think, four from the Brad Cox barn that we're going to talk about uh, in this show and certainly one maybe that's developed a little bit later but i guess has emerged as brad cox's number one contender yeah he he is number one contender on the brad cox list for me uh classic empire kind of unlucky in the kentucky derby years ago 
Uh, there's distance breeding there, and he's stepped up, I think, every race this year, winning the Risen Star and the Oakland, uh, the Arkansas Derby, both pretty impressively. Nine furlongs, uh, perfect trip in the Arkansas Derby, but he was much the best that day. Yeah. Number four on the list, Matt. Again, we're still in the yes, contender, contender. Tapich Rice could be the second choice, my most likely second choice, if I had to guess. He's a big, powerful gray. He's won a bunch of races in a row. He's also trained by Todd Pletcher like Forte is. Something about Tapich Rice, and maybe it's my 50 years of watching the Kentucky Derby, something makes me think that he's more likely to fill out the exotics than win, but you have to have him as a contender. Yeah, absolutely do. Um, and the and the the three Todd Pletcher horses that we're going to talk about, and the Brad Cox horses that are we're going to talk about, are certainly going to have an impact on the wagering pools. Yeah, Top and Trice coming off that uh, nice win in the Bluegrass, the Tampa Bay Derby. Before that, he will get that as the number two option from Todd Pletcher. Number five on the list, Matt, and again, get these are points. This is uh, straight from the points list, so these are in order. Is two fills and two fills is a horse that I do like. Um, there's reason to be worried uh, on a class level for two fills, but I like his performances so much. I like the he's got experience. I, I like that. I think he's getting better. The last race was awfully good, and I see horses transfer from Turfway, Turfway surface to Churchill or Keeneland well all the time. Two fills at upwards of maybe twenty to one is a horse I will bet. Yeah, tons of respect for this horse, a trainer, uh, Larry Ravelli, uh, a quality uh, trainer, um, maybe a little bit, you know, out of the limelight of some of the big names, but knows what he's doing. Um, and two fills, determined, always right there, always finds a way to uh, be close to winning or winning uh, when they're coming to the wire. Um, he's a contender for me. Not a win contender, but an exotics contender. Yeah, and he's more of a win contender for me. I just love the way he finished off that nine furlongs at Turfway last time. You mentioned Larry Ravelli. I'll also throw in the jockey, Jareth Love Barry. Two, uh, two horse people that are really uh, good, consistent winners uh, wherever they're stable. Larry Ravelli for years in Chicago. And Jareth Love Barry, a little bit more all over the Midwest. Two successful people that are getting a real derby shot in my eyes with... Uh, with this two fills number six finally we have a, a pretender on the list and we agree matt lord miles despite the wood memorial winner uh winning we call lord miles a son of curlin a pretender yeah and he headed into the wood memorial from the barn of safi joseph with safi thinking you know what i'm gonna give this horse one more shot because his last couple races were not particularly good following a, a Nice showing in the Mucho Macho Man. Um, you've heard me say it on the show before, but uh, whether you've picked the horse uh, to win at long odds, like long Lord Michael, Lord Miles, excuse me, did in the Wood Memorial, those kind of horses rarely come back and reproduce that kind of uh, performance. I agree, especially going from Aqueduct to Churchill Downs. Lord Miles, Matt, I don't know if I told you this, but he was one of the horses I included on my uh, multi-race tickets on Wood Memorial Day. And I got to the Wood Memorial, not alive, for the 56 to one shot winner. So tough luck. Uh, Lord Miles, yeah, I agree with everything Matt said. A pretender. Next on the list, Matt, is the Japanese, or one of the Japanese runners coming in. He impressed me so much in winning the UAE Derby. He's been very good since switching to dirt for his last six races. His name is Derma Sodagaki. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Brian, um, if this had been two, three years ago, um, I would have dismissed this horse immediately because we've seen so many horses put up performances in the UAE Derby that, that look just like what Dermasokiaki did, a visually impressive romp, and then they come to the Kentucky Derby and don't come close to reproducing that kind of uh, uh, finish. However, the Japanese horses in the last couple years have been traveling around the world. Uh, 
Middle East, Europe, United States in the Breeders' Cup and winning big races. So for that reason, I got to leave this horse as a contender. Yeah, and you're seeing more and more dirt breeding uh, within the Japanese uh, breeding program. And the horses that are coming over this year are no exception. Dermasota Gaki is the son of Mind Your Biscuits, who, of course, love to uh, uh, come flying down the lane in, in sprint races. But he's also got distance breeding on the other side. So impressive over in Dubai. He ran a very good race before that in Saudi Arabia. He's run good races on dirt in Japan. He can finish well in the UAE Derby. He was on the lead. He's versatile. So much to like, but it is tough. There's a reason that UAE Derby winners have come over here and not run well in the Kentucky Derby. It's so tough. I think it's one thing to run well in a short field like the Santa Anita Derby in your first race over in America, but to come over in America for the first time and run in the Kentucky Derby with 20 horses, it's tough. So there's a lot to like about Derma Sotogaki and, and the way Japan's been running on the dirt lately and running on the turf for that matter lately. Yeah, you got to respect him, but it's still a wild card in my eyes. Number eight, Kings Barnes. We finally have a difference of opinion. It took eight horses, Matt, to get there. Kings Barnes. Kings Barnes could be one of the favorites undefeated. You have him as a contender. Yeah, another the third of the Todd Pletcher horses, the uh, lightly raced, although I guess we could almost say that about all the horses in the Kentucky Derby uh, field. Uh, but Kings Barnes, three for three in his career, and the last time with a nice win in the Louisiana Derby with Pletcher. I don't know. Uh, again, um, if I've got this guy as a contender for the win spot, but certainly in the exotics. Okay. And, and I am, uh, I'm throwing in a pretender on this one and I could be dead wrong. Uh, but he's a horse I think will get bad. I think he'll be in the 10 to one range with, uh, angel of empire and practical move. And that's not enough value for me. He's undefeated. He's looked good. Definitely looked good, but yeah, light on experience is, is, is saying, saying in more ways than one because he's only had three starts, but also the first two was a maiden race and then a, a weak allowance race at Tampa Bay Downs. So he's only run in a stakes race once. And what happened? He got out on a slow early lead against the field that I don't think was great. Um, I, I don't trust Uncle Mo completely at 10 furlongs. I could see an Uncle Mo winning the Kentucky Derby, but if you're talking about a horse that I want to see – as a Kentucky Derby pedigree, I'm a little bit worried about Uncle Mo. So there's reasons to think that King Sparns is overbet, will be overbet. And for that reason, for me, he's a pretender on my list. Uh, let's go back to the list map. Number nine, Ray's Kane. I thought he got a bad ride. He was too far out of the bluegrass, but he was never going to do better than third. He ended up fifth. The Gotham winner didn't follow through for trainer Ben Colebrook off that nice Gotham win in the bluegrass. I, I can't see him doing better in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, you said it, and I said it early earlier in the show already. Ray's Kane was one of those long price winners uh, when he went up to New York to take the Gotham, and and wasn't able to uh, reproduce that in the Bluegrass. Yes, the Bluegrass was a tougher field, but the Kentucky Derby is not going to be easier than that race. No, and again, I thought he was way too far off the pace, but. Uh... Yeah, not enough there in the bluegrass to really consider him here. Number 10, Rocket Can, coming off two consecutive losses, uh, actually pretty well beaten by Angel of Empire and Forte in those last two losses. But we have a difference of opinion, Matt. What do you think? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's tough to uh, toss out uh, a Bill Mott runner, but to me, uh, Rocket Can is not a horse that's going in the right direction. Yeah, and, and for me, he's a horse I want to include on the exotics. That's why he's a pretender for me. Uh, I see some good things. He's a great at stakes winner this year. That happened in the Holy Bowl. Last two times he ran against big horses, Forte and Angel of Empire. Yeah, he was beaten clearly by both of them, but he kept trying. He kept running on. He was between horses. He was outside. Uh, he was uh, uh, in traffic a little bit. Rocket Ken just strikes me as a horse who probably can keep going the 10 furlongs. Love Bill Mott as the trainer here. He's performed at Churchill Downs before, 
And I think he can step up from those so-so races against Forte in the uh, Fountain of Youth and then Angel of Empire in the uh, Arkansas Derby. As a horse who's going to be 40, 50 to 1, Matt, he's a horse I want in underneath in the exotics. All right, let's move on in this list because now we have 11 through 20. Again, these are uh, in points order. And again, Matt, I, I'm liking this now. We're really getting into some differences. Hit Show is a contender for you. Yeah, we have to remember Hit uh, Hit Show from the Brad Cox barn was a winner of the Withers in New York. Um, uh, Cox brought him back in the Wood Memorial where he drew to the far outside in a big field. Um, I was really concerned about that, but he got out of the gate smartly and got into a, uh, a contending position early on in the race and just came up a tiny bit short in the Wood Memorial. Um, yeah, I, I know the Kentucky Derby is going to be tougher, but he showed me some things in there that might be important qualities in that big field. You get parked outside. Can you get into a, into a comfortable position? Um, and, and he will probably continue to, move towards the wire. So I don't think I like him as a win contender, but an exotic contender. Hitcho, there's plenty to like for the son of Candy Ride. Um, he's got a very good record and his races in New York look good. Unfortunately, I don't think the competition in New York was very good. So that that's a big hit against him, if you will. Hit show. I, I like other Coxes better. I think he was the best horse in the Wood Memorial, all things considered. But I just don't like anybody in the Wood Memorial. We're starting to talk about who you're going to throw in. Hit show. You know, you could throw him in, but not for me. I'm going to call him a pretender. Another candy ride, number 12 on the list, Confidence Game. And again, we have a difference of opinion. Confidence Game is taking a slightly weird path to the Kentucky Derby. He won the Rebel on an off track, which is 10, 10 weeks or so before the Derby. Hasn't run since. Had a real nice one-mile workout over the track at Churchill Downs for trainer Keith DeSormo. And I think Keith DeSormo is a guy that I kind of trust going a distance and, and, and working with young three-year-olds. So for me, confidence came as a long shot, as a horse to throw in the exotics. Yeah, he's a contender for me. Yeah, he's a pretender for me, Brian. And you already said it in your description of the horse when you said he's taken a weird path. Um, yeah, he has. He has not run since... Uh, the Rebel, um, he was being considered to run and get a race in in the Lexington. He didn't need the points, but uh, getting some recency in there. And I'm sorry, I, 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 Keith DeSormo can do some good things, but um, the combination of that win and the Rebel being on the slop and trying to be prepared to go 10 furlongs without a recent race bothers me. Yeah. And, and, and that's that's very fair. I'm hoping for big odds on confidence game. Uh, the next horse on the list, I'm going to be honest, I, I really don't know that I'll have verifying in my tickets, but I do have him as a contender right now, Matt. How about you? Um, you know, Brian, um, uh, I uh, I kind of feel the same way as you do. He's, he's done some good things. Um, and I have him down as a contender, but for me, it's going to be a one to consider for the exotics. Yeah, that bluegrass performance was so good. He's trained by Brad Cox. I could see him move forward. This son of Justify. He also had a really good debut, seasonal debut, an allowance race at Oakland Park where he beat good horses and he did it easily. The Rebel off track, he was in some traffic. He was a little close to a fast pace. All things considered, he didn't run bad in the Rebel, so I wasn't shocked when he ran such a good bluegrass. It was such a good bluegrass where I had to call him a contender here, but I wonder, he, he's a horse who wants to be closer to the pace and he has had some chances in some bigger races and not quite got it done before. Uh, an interesting horse moving forward, but probably not even in my top eight horses to consider for the Kentucky Derby. Number 14, Sun Thunder, Kenny McPeak trained horse, Matt. Uh, one of several sons of Into Mischief on the list. Sun Thunder has been kind of plodding along, picking up points on the way to the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, he sure has. And he's picked up enough points to, to be in the number 14 spot. 
uh, in get in qualifying points to get into the Derby. But, derby. but yeah, that's what he's done. Um, not not getting the win, fourth, fifth, second, fourth in four Derby Trail starts. Um, uh, that's noteworthy. But now we're in a field of twenty. Um, the the going's getting tough. Pretender for me. Yeah, he's a horse who could get 10 furlongs. He's a horse who could plot up to get fourth or even third. But uh, I just like a few other horses like that better. So Sun Thunder becomes a pretender for me as well, Matt. Next on the list would be the first horse I would cross off my list. Uh, his name is Wild on Ice. And, and there have been horses, mind that bird. There have been horses that have come from New Mexico and pulled off big surprises. This horse has never left New Mexico before, Matt. He's, all of his races are in New Mexico. He was a big long shot, actually, in the Sunland Park Derby. He won it. He proved he was better than his odds. But I can't see this horse coming from New Mexico and running big. Oh, no way, Brian. Uh, all of the th all of the top choices in that Sunland Park Derby uh, just didn't show up. Uh, and Wild on Ice got the win. But... It was a slow race. It is by far, by far the slowest horse in terms of speed figures of any of them that we're going to talk about here. Uh, recently, the Derby betters haven't allowed there to be a super long shot. You know, the, the long shots all seem to be like 40, 50 to one. I don't know, Brian, how can this one not be more than 99 to one? Yeah, well, Rich Strike was was up there pretty good, Matt. Don't forget about Rich Strike. Uh, yeah, pretender, pretender, no doubt about it for number 15. Number 16, Mage. Uh, we have a difference of opinion here. I'm the guy who has Mage as a pretender, but on the other hand, I think he's one of the most interesting horses on the list. In some ways, I like him better than Kings Barnes, and I compare the two because both of them have only made three career starts. I really like what I see from Mage, but I, I just think he's up against it as far as 10 furlongs, 20 horses on the first Saturday in May. Yeah, and again, uh, to me, a wild card, uh, but enough of a positive wild card that I'm leaving him in as a, a contender. He's shown speed in, in other races. He's gotten far behind and rallied uh, uh, boldly as he did in the Florida Derby when he put a scare into Forte. But we'll see. He's going to have to take another step forward for me. But he's got the look of a horse that could possibly do that. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I like Mage so much. Uh, the versatility. I mentioned it with uh, Derma Sotogaki. It's clearly a versatile horse. He's done things differently in all three races. And perhaps, you know, you can't blame the jockey because he was trying to beat Forte. And I don't at all say it, it, it was a uh, premature move that the jockey made or a bad decision by the jockey. But as it turns out, maybe he moved a little too soon. He, he threw in a big kick to come from way back to roll by, to roll by Forte. And then, of course, Forte uh, ran him down in the, in the last 100 yards. But uh, Mage is a good-looking horse. I, I just really am against, in general, I know Justify did it, but I'm against horses with so little experience, three races coming into the Kentucky Derby for both Kings Barnes and for Mage. Uh, number 17 on our list, Matt, we're back to an agreement. Number 17 is Blazing Sevens, the only Chad Brown horse on the list. Yeah, and uh, the, the as I think we mentioned on a previous show, the talk is that uh, Blazing Sevens may skip the Kentucky Derby and go to uh, – and go to the Preakness as Chad Brown has done before. But even, even if he was in the field, um, he might still be a pretender for me. I just don't like the his lack of progress from his two-year-old campaign when he won the champagne. Yeah, just like May, she's a son of good magic. Uh, I'm with you as far as a pretender. He did certainly run a better race last yeah. time, went third in the bluegrass, but – it wasn't really a good third, and yeah, I, I if he takes another huge step forward, maybe he's a horse who could run fifth or sixth, but I, I don't like him in here. And I, I'm not big on Disarm, Matt. One thing I'll say about Disarm, I, I could see Disarm certainly winning races this summer, winning smaller races, winnings, uh, winning some of the other derbies out there. Uh, but when you run nowadays what is so close to the Kentucky Derby, 
and you don't impress in that race, I, I don't like that. And Disarm really did not impress me in the Lexington. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. And then I heard uh, Steve Asmussen talking about the race, uh, his performance in the Lexington. And he said that, you know, the cutback in distance because he had gone uh, uh, the mile and three sixteenths prior to that down to a mile and a sixteenth uh, may have been part of the reason. And he sees this horse as a horse who will have no trouble getting the 10 furlongs in the Derby. So for that reason, uh, I left him as a lukewarm contender. Yeah, Sonic Gunrunner, I, I agree with the distance part. He should be okay going longer. Uh, who's next on the Reincarnate is actually a horse I thought of as a possible long shot to throw in underneath. But they already had a couple of those horses. Confidence Game, Rocket Can. I, I just feel like both of them have the ability to pass horses a little bit better than Reincarnate. Reincarnate's going to be one of those horses who probably should be forwardly placed. It's probably has a better shot if he's forwardly placed. I could see him running a good race at 10 furlongs. He seems like a tough horse. Baffert, former Baffert, now Yachtin. Still, I had to go pretender in this one. Yeah, and, and with the trainer change, that probably means he's going to maybe get bet more than some of the other horses that you mentioned uh, uh, just before. Um, he uh, had a tough trip and was a, was a buzz, buzz horse going into the Arkansas Derby, um, frankly, got a very good trip and coming down the stretch when push came to shove, he came up a little empty and finished third again. That just doesn't bode well for me uh, heading into the Derby. Yeah, I only liked him fourth best coming out of that Arkansas Derby pretender. Uh, another Japanese horse, Cotton Noir, he's actually run against Derma Sotogaki three times. Derma Sotogaki has beaten him all three times in three different countries. This will be their fourth meeting and their fourth different country. That may have never happened in horse racing before. I'm not sure, but that, that's an interesting thing. Uh, the way Derma Sotogaki beat him last time in the UAE Derby, it's hard for me to seriously consider Cotton Noir, who is a son, Matt, of Drafong in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and, and frankly, his form as a two-year-old, uh, to me, seemed to be a little bit better than what he has shown this year. Yeah, yeah, I like him list, least of the Japanese. Now, the next list, the final list, we have six more horses. They're not in right now, but uh, we think some of them at least will get in, as defections always tend to happen in the weeks leading up to the Kentucky Derby. First horse to get in is Jace's Road, Matt. Jace's Road is a son of Quality Road, trained by Brad Cox, that trainer again. Um, I, I, I guess he's he's run, he's run good races. He's got some speed. But the fact that he just could never really threaten Kings Barnes after stalking pretty closely early in that slow pace and then was pretty well beaten, I got to put him on the pretender list. Yeah, I I felt the same way, Brian. Although I although I do think that his form improved a bit after a, a disappointing performance um, in the Southwest. Yeah, and he's a horse who does like a dry track better than a, a sloppy track. Something else to think about with him a little bit too. Number twenty two is a horse I'd like to see get in. John Sheriff's train Skinner. Skinner Matt is a son of Curlin. And he's been improving. He's running big races throughout his career. Hasn't won any. Uh, he's only won a maiden. But he, he he keeps showing you something. And the last race was a bit of an eye-opener. Even though he was third, I thought he ran very well in the Santa Anita Derby. Yeah, and the two horses uh, in front of him uh, certainly uh, performed well um, for uh, uh, – and for trainer John Sheriffs, one of the good guys of racing like to see him uh, get back into the Derby here. Yeah. Skinner's certainly a horse you think could like a mile and a quarter could like that long stretch of the Kentucky Derby, an interesting horse. If he gets in, Matt and I both have him as a contender. The next horse on the list, we both have as a pretender. I think he's a beautiful, good looking son of into mischief who again could do big things He's been beaten by Forte recently, but I think the Florida Derby was a very good performance. Dale Romans, who we're used to seeing in the Kentucky Derby, this is his only chance sitting at number 23, Cyclone Mischief. Yeah, and uh, uh, I I guess he's improved a little bit this year. His, his uh, 
debut in the Holy Bowl was just just not good. Then he was third in the Fountain of Youth and third uh, in the Florida Derby also. Uh, son of Intermischief that you mentioned, and I'll be honest, just in general, uh, um, I, I, I don't love the Intermischiefs going the mile and a quarter. Yeah, Beholder was able to do it at one point in her career. <laughs> uh, but she was something special, of course. Yeah. Cyclone Mischief did win a nice race. Uh, early, early this year, an allowance race, but uh, yeah, he hasn't he hasn't broken through in his stakes recently. Pretender for us, as is Major Dude, who's a Pletcher. Uh, uh, the finally we see another Pletcher after the big three. Major Dude, he's been a Major Dude on turf, Matt. Both of his graded stakes wins came on the turf. He's coming off a pretty good uh, beating by two fills up at Turfway Park. Yeah, and that was on the torpedo surface. So yeah, honestly. I don't know if this horse is uh, is a dirt horse. Yeah, it, he did win his debut at Monmouth Park on the dirt, I believe. So yep. something to think about for the dude. But uh, he'd be pretty low on my overall list here. Next horse on the list I want to see get in. He's the third Japanese horse on the list, Matt. Mandarin Hero. Uh, Shanghai Bobby, I never thought I'd be looking forward to a Shanghai Bobby going 10 furlongs. But again, you get that blend of Japanese breeding in there. And, and that really seems to help. Maybe the training's part of it. Mandarin, Mandarin Hero came over, unlike so many foreign horses, came over one race early, ran a big race in the San Anita Derby. Yep, he certainly did. And and you talked about that you, that strategy of getting the race here in America. Um, but, you know, uh, the point of this contender, pretender exercise is to cut the field size down so you got to make some decisions that are tougher. This was one of the tougher ones for me when I made this horse a pretender. Yeah, if he gets in, he's an interesting horse. It'll be tough to reproduce what he did in San Anita Derby, but if he does, he could win the Kentucky Derby in my eyes. Number 26 on the list, King Russell. King Russell is a horse I bet in the Arkansas Derby. Uh, he's a horse I think wants a distance, creative cause. 26 on the list, probably won't get in. Maybe I can play him a little bit in the Belmont because, again, I think he's a horse screaming for distance. Rally nicely. I am a contender. You say no. Yeah, again, uh, he did rally ni uh, nicely. Does have the look of a horse that is getting better. The look of a horse that we'll see win some, some races later on in the year. But, um, again, uh, it, at the number 26 slot, I doubt he's going to get in. I made him a pretender. Yeah, Ronnie Moquette. I'd like to see that horse get in, but uh, he's got uh, six horses to jump still. All right, that's it, folks. That's our list of contenders and pretenders. 26 horses we talked about. Uh, we both had more pretenders than contenders, and that's part of our job to cut this down, but it wasn't easy to cut this down. And, and there certainly be a lot of horses that I use in some small multi-race tickets and a lot of horses for sure I'll use underneath in the exotics. Matt, can I get a, a parting shot from you, my friend? Yeah, so we'll go from uh, the from our list of contenders, Brian, to start doing things in our upcoming shows where we'll talk about the pace scenario, we'll talk about the post position draw, we'll come up with uh, fine tune our picks a little bit more, we'll have recommended wagers and final analyses. So stay with us on the Derby Trail. Absolutely. Stay with Horse Center. That goes without saying, but especially now on the Kentucky Derby Trail, only 17 days out, as Matt said. Thanks so much for watching, folks. And to all those new people getting Kentucky Derby fever, we welcome you to watch Horse Center every week with us. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you never miss another show. We also want to thank our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Next week, we will be back talking Kentucky Derby. Don't miss it. We'll see you then.